I'm just gonna start this video because everything's distracting. Whalen's catching fish. He almost caught stubborn in another, I think I said it in the last video, how he's trying to catch stubborn and he stays like two feet away. Um, he just caught him, but he got off so he didn't technically catch him. Um, so he was super excited about that and I had to help him with it. And then just having a bad hair day, it just keeps getting in my face. Um, so I don't know if anyone else has that problem when you wash your hair. It just never works right. Um, so anyways, I was gonna, we're back at the pond and I just, it's too hot for me to feel like fishing. And so I just sit in the car and let him fish and help him with different things. And I was like, you know, I can do, I can do another video on something and just kind of, cause it's been a minute. Um, so I was just trying to think of something that I could talk about and, you know, it's like my, my pond thoughts. Uh, but I was just thinking about everything going on in my life and, you know, I can talk about some of those things, not personally for me, but just how it can really apply to anybody, um, a lot of people. Um, we, we attract what we believe. Um, and so like in a relationship, um, relationships, <clears throat> if every person you're with has a, um, pattern, a pattern of there's similarities with them, um, you yeah, know, that's something you're attracting and something inside of you that attracts that kind of person. Um, you can look at the people that you hang out with, um, how you can, how you can really, one way you can tell what your beliefs are is looking at the people you're around, their characteristics. Um, like if you believe that nobody loves you, nobody cares about you, the people around you are probably going to be people that use you, people that don't treat you very well. Um, and this can go in any aspect of life if your beliefs on money. Um, you can tell a lot about your beliefs on money based on your finances, your, your life with, you know, how you live, um, the kind of money you make. If you don't have very good beliefs around money, you believe having money is bad, you're probably not going to have that much money. Um, if you believe having money is just the most important thing, if you have a rich mindset. Huh? That's okay. You kind of just started, so I'm sure you'll get something. Okay. Yeah, he's, it's beautiful here. I don't know if you can see, but like he's over there fishing. But like over here, there's horses. There's many horses, and it's so beautiful and peaceful here. Um, camera had to adjust. Um, what was I saying? I was talking about finances. Yeah, if you have whatever your mindset is, that's what you're gonna attract. So if you have this mindset of, I'm never gonna be wealthy. I'm never gonna have a nice house. I'm never going to be financially comfortable. You're not. <laughs> You're not. You can't go against your beliefs. Um, and it's just in every area of your life. If you believe bad things about yourself, if you believe, um, you know, you're not worthy of love, you're gonna, in your mind and back here is gonna be looking for things to confirm that. Um, and it will confirm that it will, it's your, how you perceive things. Um, and so just to go narrow it down with relationships, um, for me, I've seen a pattern in my relationships, um, and it, it hurts me to see these things, it hurts hurts me to see these things because it's not just me that's affected it's my son who is also 
are experiencing this with me. Um, and so it's a, it's a wake up call too. It's, it's not just for me to figure out what's going on and heal that. It's also for my son. So he doesn't, it doesn't go down the line and him end up having these same issues. Um, but just looking at my relationships, all of them have had a controlling, um, aspect to it. All of them have been dysfunctional in one way or another. Um, all of them have made me feel like I'm not good enough, that I have to perform to get love. I have to prove myself for me to get love in return. I have to earn that love. Um, all these things that I'm noticing and you know, I can, I can sit back and I can say, it's his fault. It's his fault. I had nothing to do with this relationship being the way it is. It's all because of his characteristics that this happened. You know, nobody's perfect. People all have something to work on within themselves. And if you're not talking to somebody, if you're not seeing a counselor, mentor, coach, um, to just kind of keep your mental state in check, just checking in with your heart to help you through that, it's very easy to just go down a rabbit hole and not even realize it and just have all these things going on and not understand why. Um, but it is not all on that person. I'm ending up in these kind of relationships and I'm attracting these kind of people because of something in me. Because if I was truly connected to myself, if I truly loved myself, if I knew in my heart that I didn't have to perform to be loved, God loves me exactly the way I am. And we love because he first loved us. He loves you exactly the way you are in your mess, when you feel like you are the most unlovable. When you feel like you're the most unlovable, God loves you unconditionally. It's unconditional love. And if we can truly know that, you know, I would come to these guys, these things would stand out and I would know I deserve more. I don't have to perform. And when I start seeing the things in them, that's where I can em be empowered to say, I don't want this before it gets out of hand. Um, and so I just went through something like this and I can't fully put the blame on him. I also chose into the relationship. It was you know, I also had a, after the breakup, there was a two month period where I stayed talking to him. It was, it was, um, a, a hero, um, what is it? The word, the word hero complex. I had a hero complex going on, um, where I wanted to help him. And I even told him at one point, I was like, you know, we're not together right now. This is the perfect time for us to just not focus on getting back together. This is a perfect time for us to just heal separately and figure it out. Like figure out ourselves, like love ourselves. You can't go into a relationship and expect someone to love you for who you are. If you don't even one, love yourself for who you are. And two, even know who you are. How can someone else know you if you don't even know you completely? It's impossible. And so that was the whole idea behind us being separate and just working on ourselves and me helping him um, for the coaching that I've been through just for myself and in trainings. I was wanting to share some of that with him and helping him to talk to his heart and connect to his little boy. Um, and get love in in moments where he didn't receive love when he was younger. And he was doing it, you know? He was doing it. It was, it was amazing and it felt so good. Um, but it's really hard 
to coach somebody that you're close to. And that's where I should have just put my hero complex down and said, hey, I, I know some people. I really think it would benefit you and me and our kids for you to go talk to these people. Um, but I didn't because I wanted to be the hero in the story and I wanted to be the one to help him. And it, of course, we were too close. And it ended, inevitably ended really badly. Um, but I just wanted to just talk on that a little bit. If you're not in a relationship, you know, and to, to me, if you are not married, you are not bound to have to stay with that person. And really, in my belief, um, if you're married to somebody, and I'm not telling anybody what to do, because there's also a point where even though there's a lot going on and things are crazy and you're like, I just need to divorce. It's been going on for years. I just need a divorce. If you're making choices in a state of sympathetic where you are just hijacked and in panic mode it's not a good place to make any decisions you need to go and you need to really look within yourself and take care of those parts first otherwise it's just going to carry into other relationships um but to say all that i'm not against divorce um my parents growing up were very dysfunctional and I remember as a little girl me and my brothers we just we prayed we wished that they would just get a divorce just get a divorce like this when you're a little kid like little little like not even teenager not even 10 like for years wishing someone would just get a divorce because it's just not healthy that's pretty bad <laughs> they probably should have gotten a divorce at that point um, but neither one of them knew how to fix anything. Um, but I do think there are certain times where maybe God didn't okay that marriage. Maybe God wasn't on that marriage. And you got in that marriage and it wasn't for you. And, you know, if there's abuse, if there's things, things like this, I know a lot of churches, church families... You know, it's a completely against divorce. You're terrible and God hates you and you're, you don't divorce. You just deal with it. I don't agree with that. I don't think God wants that for you. Um, but that's just my thoughts. That is not me telling anybody to get divorced. Um, talk to somebody. That's where I feel you need to talk to somebody. And look within yourself. Um, but aside from that... If you're not married, if you are not married, I don't care if you've been with that person for 15 years. You know, there's, you're, you can choose yourself at any point. Um, no one can make you do anything. Um, nobody, now there's, there's parts of us that feel that way. Um, he made me mad. You didn't go in there and tweak those neurons and, you know, you allowed that situation to control your emotions. Um, and not that that's an easy thing either. It's not easy to just decide, you know what, I don't want to be mad at this right now. Um, I know you cheated on me, but I'm not, I'm not bothered by this. This isn't stirring me. You know, it's, it's, it's natural to feel things. It's just learning learning how to connect to your heart and let your heart speak and let your heart feel and bringing love into those moments when we're triggered, when there's pain um, and making wise choices from a empowered um, from an empowered position um, but I just really encourage anyone who's not in a relationship, I say not in a relationship, meaning someone who's not married. Um, even if you're single, that's even more so. Um, if you are not in a relationship, 
I highly encourage you to get connected with yourself. Get really connected with yourself. Not only for you, but for the person that you're you're in love with. You know, the person that's a potential spouse in the future. If you really care about them, you want them to be in a healthy relationship too. This is their life too. And then kids in the future. You know, if you have kids, they're going to be around all of this. They, they need a healthy, as healthy as possible. We're all going to fail. Um, I'm a mom and I tell my son all the time, um, I'm going to fail you. I'm going to fail you. I'm going to do my best um, to be the best mom I can be. But I, I have told him, I'm like, buddy, I am not going to be able to be perfect. There's going to be times I'm going to snap and get mad. And sometimes it's not even about you. Sometimes it's something I'm dealing with and you're just right there. And I'm so sorry. Um, but they're affected by all of this. And so I just highly encourage everyone to see a counselor, coach, anybody that is at least a couple steps ahead of them, one step ahead of them in anything to learn yourself, grow in yourself, learn how to connect to your heart, learn how to listen to what your heart's needing, learn what your triggers are, what are your beliefs, what are you believing about yourself, about the world, about relationships, what are your true beliefs, and there's a lot of beliefs we have that we got as children that aren't helping us anymore, which we need to appreciate those beliefs because they're trying to just protect us. That's all they want to do, but they're not helping us. That's not how we do it anymore. Um, and just learning how to do that. And then, so when you do go into a relationship, not only do you already love yourself and you're not going to be devastated and your whole world's going to come crashing down if that relationship ends because you know who you are and you don't need that person to feel like you matter, to feel like you're somebody. And when you do get in a relationship, it's going to be out of a, a really healthy place to where you can grow together. Not to say that relationships are going to be perfect if you're connected and, you know, there's going to be some headbutting, but it's still going to be from a healthy point where you know who you are, what your beliefs are, what's triggering you. Sometimes we get triggered in a relationship and we just backlash on everybody and, you know, we blame them. But if we're connected with ourselves and something makes us mad or upset, or frustrated, we can recognize that and be like, oh, I'm triggered right now. And we can bring that to them and say, hey, um, I'm feeling really triggered about this. You know, this is, I feel like this is something, you know, from when this happened and it's reminding me, this is reminding me of that and just getting love in. Um, so really getting connected with yourself. I really, really strongly encourage everyone to just connect. I, after seeing everything I've gone through, <laughs> I've been on a swirl lately because um, I did stop. I got really distracted. I wasn't taking care of myself. I was putting other people first again. It's one of my one of my things. Um, and I think I talked about that in one of my first video, my first videos, like I have so many of them, like two videos ago. <laughs> um, I had talked about that, had the people pleasing thing and making me feel like, okay, now, I can be taken care of. I was falling back into it because I stopped connecting. And that's something too. You can't just do it one time and like you're good. It's a journey. It's a long journey. It's a lifetime journey of just connecting with yourself. However that looks. I tried the journaling thing and I'm I'm feeling like the journaling thing isn't my thing. Um, things like painting. Painting. Um, just sitting and just talking to my heart. Listening to music and you know worship and just being being with myself and just loving myself in moments throughout the whole day too it's hard for me to set a time um a set time mornings i'm not a morning person <laughs> um 
I'm not going to keep this too long. It's already 20 minutes. Sorry. Um, but whatever works for you. I'm not a morning person. Um, it's hard for me to have a set time. I do have to set schedules. I have to book myself in my planner. Um, but just throughout the day, I realized is my best way of doing it. If I'm feeling a little, you know, off, I'll just check in and be like, how are we doing? How are you feeling right now? Um, and then just throughout the day, regardless, I'm like, how are you feeling right now? I just want to check on you. And all this might sound really weird too. Um, but maybe I can go more in depth with that at some point. Maybe. But I feel like that was an, a good little bit to kind of start with, to go on. Um, so just go and love yourself. Sometimes it's hard. Sometimes I look in the mirror and I'm like, Ugh. But you just gotta, you just gotta keep at it. Keep at it. Love yourself. You are lovable. You are so lovable. If you are breathing, if you are breathing, God has a purpose for you. You matter. And you're not done yet. And I'm here for you. If you want to talk. Message. Doesn't matter. Um, we're all in this together. We're all a mess sometimes. We don't know what we're doing. But it's okay because, you know, we have each other. We have people. If you don't have people, get your people. Let them know, hey, um, I'm, I'm working on myself. And, you know, if you have things you're trying to do, set up that accountability. Hey, I really want to, you know, make sure I'm setting time once a week to go just take care of myself. Just have a day at the beach, you know, go and paint or go for a walk like can you can you be my accountability partner can you just like check on me I want to do this this day can you just make sure I do that you know hold hold you accountable um I encourage all of that and I know y'all can do it for yourself you know do this for you because you do deserve it and it's just those little steps it's amazing how how you do one thing is how you do everything and everything will start shifting and it's amazing it really is and that's also the opposite or I guess it's all the same I was speaking that in a good way like how you do one thing like really well everything will shift but also if you're doing something from a really unhealthy state everything else is going to be really unhealthy and just be a mess too so Y'all have a good day. I'm going to go hang out with kiddo. Bye.